We're starting. What's going on, everybody? Good morning. Today is Tuesday. It is August 30th, 2022. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup. That was warmer than anticipated. Oh, how are you all? How was your Monday? Good morning, Lou, Stacy, Mark, John, and all the rest of you, whether you're watching live later or listening. Thanks for coming by. A uh, shout out as always to Frank for all of his work behind the scenes, to Josh for our theme music, and to all of you for, well, most of you get up, maybe, maybe you're not getting up for this, but for making this part of your morning. I appreciate it. Uh, and good morning, Jenny. Well, I had meetings like all day yesterday. Meetings starting at nine. My last meeting ended at three. What did I have? Seven meetings in there? Eight meetings? 42 meetings? I don't know. There's a lot of meetings. So many meetings. But most of them were productive and I felt good about the day. Other than the house is kind of a disaster. It wouldn't take me very long. It would probably take me an hour to put everything away and just kind of deal with it. Maybe not even that much. And maybe I'll do that after we talk today. Because starting sort of today, I'm on semi-vacation. Semi-vacation is, is something that doesn't actually exist, but it's what I do because most of my time off still involves work. It just involves work in a different way or in a different place. Got some video work I'm doing today. Thursday and Friday, I will be coming to you from other places. And no show on Monday or Labor Day. Just a heads up. Lou says, Monday was brutal. I hope everyone's Monday was way better than mine. Well, I'm, it sounds like mine was. I'm sorry you had a brutal day. That sucks. For me, Mondays are really hard because the transition from a very free form, I dictate everything in my schedule, aka the weekend, to I have to be on calls at certain times is difficult for me. It always has been. Uh, Frank says, I set my alarm this morning so I could see all of my friends. Good morning, Frank. Glad you're here. And good morning, Dennis. I think I got everybody. Good morning, Brian. Oh, I felt like I was saying something. Oh, yeah. I got to pick stuff up. But I'll tell you, I had a call yesterday about uh, a free training day Pacific Northwest. I saw some more shirt sales come through. I shipped a helmet. Bunch of great things are happening. Really excited. Uh, I just want to remind everyone um, for free training days, if you are attending, if you are going to purchase something, make sure you allow enough time to have it shipped to you before you leave because you're not picking it up at the event. And for those of you attending Northeast and you want to pick up a VIP bundle, uh, keep in mind that those are not going to be available like the day before. We're going to shut off ordering on those two to three weeks ahead to give us enough time to get everything together because, you know, Andrew and I have to do things, get things made and put them together and assemble all that. So just keep in mind. <laughs> Good morning, Nathan and Liz. And Liz says, apparently on Tuesday, I can't spell Monday. I noticed that, but I figured I'd let you know that. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I got I got a shout out, Lou. So Lou, Lou's on YouTube and he says, smash that like, folks. Lou has, uh, in the best possible way, seemingly become indignant that, that this show is not bigger, which means so much to me. I see his comments come through on YouTube. He's like, why, why is this show only getting five likes or, or whatever on, on YouTube? Um, so thanks for the support. I appreciate it. We're doing our best. We are growing. If, you know, here's the thing. There's a, there's a great uh, kind of lesson in here for all of you. And I think we can correlate it to martial arts too. And I see a bunch of comments coming in. I'm going to work through them. If you think about your early days of training, pardon my yawning. If you think about early days of training, it's really easy to see progress 
you know, day one to day two, day two to day three. And even over the first, let's say, year or two, you can notice, hey, you know, I went to class for an hour or 90 minutes or whatever, and I got better. But if you've been training for decades, it becomes really difficult to notice the progress from one class to the next or one week or month, even year to the next. And then you will often reach a point where unless you are going to invest more time, the progress on some skills require ignoring others and they actually degrade a bit. For us to take a look at First Cup and see growth, I have to take a big step back. We are growing. It's just not day to day or week to week or really even month to month. But there's been some kind of momentum, some pressure of late, and the average show attendance has been a couple couple people bigger, a couple attendees larger than it had been a few months ago. So I'm happy. Is this ever going to be a 5,000 people live show? Probably not. What if it was? I don't know. We would lose some of the magic of it, but hopefully it would still be fun. I'd still do it. I don't know. Frank's the one who keeps tally on how many episodes we've done. Uh, maybe he'll drop that in the chat. Uh, Dennis says, Amazon has set unreasonable expectations with Prime, same day and next day shipping. That is kind of cool. Uh, but it does kind it, it does change people's expectations. Remember in early remember early days of the internet, you'd order something and it would show up in three weeks. And now you're like, oh, not available with Prime shipping. I'm not gonna buy it. Honestly, the reason I buy things with Prime has nothing to do with shipping. It has to do with the return policy. It's a much simpler return policy. Like I've got one, maybe two things sitting over in the pile that have to go back. They didn't quite work the way I expected them to. The average return rate on Amazon is around 10%. Did you know that? Jenny says, Monday was really emotional for me, both good and bad things, digging through some old stuff from my past and finding ways to become a better version of myself. That's awesome. I'm sorry that it was sparked by some things less than positive. It ended with me understanding ooh, some things about myself that I had never stopped to think about. So I'll call it a win. That sounds good to me. Good morning, Gad and Nikki. And Jenny says, amen to that return policy comment. Yeah. For sure. Let's see. I thought I was buying a CD player that had Bluetooth. No, it's Bluetooth in. It's also a Bluetooth speaker. I don't need a Bluetooth speaker. I've got like six Bluetooth speakers. I want to be able to play a CD via Bluetooth to one of my many Bluetooth speakers. I didn't quite read the fine print. But now I've read the fine print and I'm going to return it. <sighs> Coffee is so good. Uh, what else happened yesterday? Uh, I just got out of the house, went to the gym for a little bit. You know, one of the things, and I, and I, want, to, I want to talk about this for a minute. We, we've talked about this before. We've talked about this in episodes of Martial Arts Radio. This idea that when a day isn't going well, and we look at, let's say, going to class. Let's use that as an example. And you're exhausted. And you don't think you can handle it. Instead of forcing the commitment, I am going to class and I'm going to participate and I'm going to have a great day. What if you make a deal with yourself? I'm going to drive to class. I'm going to put all my stuff in the car. I'm going to hope that I feel better when I get there. But if I don't, I'm giving... I'm giving myself permission to not go to class. That's okay. I went to the gym yesterday. I gave myself permission to not do a long workout. I went, I pet the dog, I did something. Something's better than nothing. And I definitely felt better when I got there than when I was here. You could also go to class and say, you know what? I'm going to give myself permission to 
not hold the highest of possible standards. And maybe you tell the instructor, I've had a terrible day. I'm happy to be here, but I'm going to be really honest. My head is not in the game. If we're going to spar today, I'm going to ask to sit out because I don't trust myself to be focused enough that I'm not going to you know, do something to hurt someone. Hopefully you trained at a school that would allow you to say things like that. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. And I think quite often we look at everything as all or nothing. <laughs> Dennis says, speaking of exhausted time for that second cup. Hmm. Gad says, had a great training yesterday, worked on my Yokshagi sidekick. Got real good advice from my instructor. That's great. And Jenny says, you want to play a CD? Uh, Jenny, I'm looking at somewhere around six, 700 CDs over on my shelf right there. I used to DJ and I probably got rid of several hundred of them. I, I had close to a thousand CDs at one point. And I still like CDs and there are plenty of albums I have that are not on Spotify. Different versions and things like that. So, yeah. Also, keep in mind that if the power goes out, which went out over the weekend, it's not a, a rare occurrence. If we were to lose power for a day or two, if I had a rechargeable CD player and a Bluetooth speaker, I could have music. And not wor worry about burning my phone down because what do I have to do with my phone? When the power's out, it has to go in that window in order for me to get anything. Because I live in the woods. And Jenny also says, to Dennis, me not being a coffee drinker leaves more coffee for you. <laughs> well, it looks like we're all having tough Mondays. Liz says, yesterday was rough. We came back from camping to find our standing freezer door was left open. Oh, no! All the food had to go. Then ended my evening calling Grubhub on a fraudulent order that was delivered in Chicago. Someone ordered hundreds worth of seafood. Hopefully we will get our money back. August has had a lot of not so wonderful things happen, but that is part of life. We're trying to stay positive. Mm. I'm so sorry. Um, at risk of, of throwing suggestions on top of painful experiences, there are a number of rather inexpensive uh, fridge and freezer sensors that you can get. Uh, in the freezer, I have one at the bottom and one at the top that are connected to a Wi-Fi thing. I've also got a manual one, you know, just a little probe thermometer that sticks in and I can look at it and check what's going on because just like you, there's a lot of money tied up in that chest freezer. Um, when the greenhouse was up, I also had a sensor in there. And really, I should get a second one because the, the base station doesn't reach both the chest freezer in the garage and the freezer in the house. I'll do that at some point. That wouldn't work if the power was out, but um, there's a phone notification that you can set up so it have an alarm. So you could go, oh, something's going on there. And you can ask a friend or a neighbor, hey, can you go check something's going on with the freezer? And they would go, shut the door. Jenny says, my boy's dad was a DJ. We used to spend his weekly paychecks on CDs and Chinese food. We had an entire bedroom shelved to hold the collection. I get it. Kelly had great classes focused on, I'm assuming this is yesterday, focused on talking about expectations for the new school year and went over various grabs and pushes that kids experience from bullies and what techniques we can use to protect ourselves without, quote, hitting so they still follow school policies. It's a shame that we have to find space in there to navigate. Someone pushes me. Yeah. I will say there are quite a few exchanges from school that I wish I'd handled differently. Because I suspect that if I'd handled them differently, I would have been left alone. That would have been nice. Ironically, the only time I really spoke up was when it was about somebody else. 
there's what there's one incident I remember very clearly. Got off the bus. This kid that I'd known for a long time, actually he took karate with me at one point, was being harassed by a kid in my grade. Jeff was a year older than me. All three of us were fairly small, but Ryan thought he was tough. And I just pulled him off. I was like, no, you're not going to do this. And he wasn't expecting it because Jeff wasn't sticking up for himself, so we walked away. And then the interesting thing was Jeff was mad at me. Odd guy. I've been thinking about him lately. Interesting character. No idea where he went. Dennis says, there's something to be said about album art. On the flip side, see what I did there? I know, CDs are not vinyl. It's pretty cool to have an entire music library on your phone. Absolutely is. But is it really yours? For most of us, we're renting it. Leasing it. I've got a lot of great stuff that I don't have on CD, or, or actually quite a bit that I do. Saved in Spotify. On my phone, I spend quite a bit of money per year. What, what am I spending? Like $180 per year on Spotify. That's a lot of CDs. And honestly, if we had um, the kind of music stores that we used to have around here, I used to go in and dig through the UCDs and grab stuff, three bucks, five bucks. It was great. He says, I do miss album art and reading the liners. As everything's gone to the internet, we've really lost the value of context. And that's what CD, I'm, I'm gesturing to my CDs. That's what album art is. It's context. That's what liner notes are. That's what, for uh, albums that had lyrics, it's context. It allows you to get into the head of the artist a bit. Because most music comes from a place that is at least partially emotional. And so if you can put yourself in a similar state to the artist, you can have a better understanding of where they're at and maybe also of where you're at. Most of us have music that we listen to during certain emotional states. You know, maybe this is a happy song, maybe this is a sad song, maybe this is an angry song. Why do we do that? We do that because it helps us explore those emotions for ourselves. And we can find correlations in our training. If you're happy, there are probably things that you prefer to do in the context of martial arts. For quite a few people, if you're really upset, hit a heavy bag. It's kind of a, a cliche standard at this point, right? Beating on a heavy bag. It's really hard to be angry when you're exhausted. And we know that. We want to we get that out. And I think that's healthy. There's also, uh, um, and, and we're not going to go deep on this because I don't think it's a subject uh, a subject that everyone's going to want to follow me with, but we can also draw a correlation between going really deep on forms and on music or visual art or something. Because at the highest levels, forms, whether you call them kata or pomse or toll or hyol or patterns or whatever, at the highest levels, they are an art form. Because your presentation of them does convey a bit of yourself just as playing you know whoever's sonata you know a concerto written by somebody hundreds of years ago still has a little bit of individualization and say the same thing about forms and frank gave us some stuff so i'm going to switch over to that now Uh, I think he says, remembering, loving to read the lyrics on the CD or cassette case, and also realizing I've been singing the song wrong. <laughs> yes. Okay, so thank you as always to Frank for giving us something to chat about. And on this day in 73, 1973, actress Cameron Diaz was born. Here is most of an article titled, How Charlie's Angels Made Cameron Diaz Healthier by Mandy Kerr. 
In the pages of the body book, she revealed it all began with 2000's Charlie's Angels, a feature film adaptation of the classic 70s TV series about a trio of women private investigators. The movie starred Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. According to British Marie Claire, Diaz described being ill-prepared for the physicality of her role in Charlie's Angels in her book. In the film, she and her co-stars had multiple elaborate fight scenes requiring a lot of training. So naturally, before filming began, the three stars practiced with the help of an expert for the rigorous fight scenes. But as Diaz said in the body book, she basically started from scratch. I was 26 years old. I had just quit smoking. I had poor eating habits. I had no strength. Then I was cast in the Charlie's Angels movie. Diaz continued saying she showed up excited and perhaps a little naive about training. It was autumn and Drew Barrymore and I arrived to train for our roles on set. Chung Yen Yun, who was our martial arts master, was there along with all of our trainers. She recalled, we were so excited. Woohoo. However, the excitement quickly faded when they learned just how serious and intense their training would get. As an aside, have any of you, especially those of you who have had your own martial arts school, had somebody come in and they they assume that they're not only in good shape, but they're going to crush everybody else because they're in great shape and they find very quickly that they're not going to. We've talked a bunch about you don't have to be in, in shape to start training, just start training. But if you're going to hold yourself to a certain standard or, or rather set an expectation that you're going to perform at a certain level on a thing that you've never done before, I think that's funny. Diving back in, Diaz revealed she and Barrymore didn't know what their training entailed. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, she wrote. Chung Yen Yun began to speak when the interpreter translated his words for us. Today, he said, I'm going to introduce you to your new best friend. You're going to learn to love your new best friend. Yen continued, giving them a taste of what was to come. You're going to have him with you all the time. You're going to cherish him, and he's going to be a part of your life, Diaz recalled before adding. We were so excited. We looked at each other as if to say, who could it be? And Cheng Yin Yun said, your new best friend is pain. <laughs> I want to train with this guy. This guy sounds awesome. In a March 2014 interview with Furthermore, Diaz opened up about what training for Charlie's Angels did for her life. She called it a turning point of sorts. Excuse me. The day I started martial arts training for Charlie's Angels was a pivotal moment in my life in terms of my physical fitness, she said. It was the first time someone showed me what my very own body had the potential to do. She continued saying prior to that experience, she, quote, had no concept of the extent to which my body could be trained to be that strong and capable. Noting she and co-stars learned movie foo. I like that she's acknowledging that. As for the pain, she said it went away with time. Eventually, the pain of eight hours a day of training subsided and allowed us to execute intricately choreographed fight sequences in heels. Today, Diaz takes care of her body with exercise, needs food from her garden. She once posted homegrown tomatoes on Instagram and relies on a fitness plan. I've read other accounts like this. The idea that because they're trying to do so much, coordinated in so many ways, and think about it, if you watch a typical fight scene, they have multiple angles. Right? They're cutting from here to here to here to here. Oh, as I smash my elbow. A lot of the times they need more than one take for that. And they've got to have it dialed in so well that when they do multiple takes, they can cut them together without it looking like different takes. So they're practicing a high intensity form with multiple people over and over and over again. I don't know about you. But it sounds like a heck of a lot of fun, though quite difficult. I would love to do movie stunt work. I think it would be a blast if I was working with the right people. I will say that I, I have. There are a couple people I've talked to about this, but if you if you've read Faith, if you've read the novel Faith that I wrote, the choreography is built in, and I did that intentionally. That it's it is simple choreography. I believe that with the right people, we could shoot the whole thing in a weekend. It's not a complex movie. And I hope one day we do, because there's there's some elements to that that I think, even though it was written as a book, there's some elements that I'd love to see show up on a screen. Maybe it'll happen someday. And as an aside, I told Jenny, I said, after the first of the year, I need you to lean on me to start book two. It's going to happen. Uh, 
in regards to my comment on training with the, the stunt director or the fight choreographer. Jenny says, I want to train with this guy. I was just thinking the same thing. Ha, 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 ha. I love it. And I feel like your comments are much delayed, and that's okay. All right. I hope you have a great day. I hope whatever you're doing is good. I hope for those of us, myself included, who had a tough Monday, your Tuesday is easier. It's better. It's more enjoyable. I hope if you haven't, you'll go back and you'll listen to yesterday's episode of Martial Arts Radio. And yeah, you guys are a big part of my, my morning, my life. You set the tone. Having you all here, reading your comments, knowing that I wasn't the only one who had a tough Monday. That's really helpful to me. Knowing that we're all hoping for a better day today, that's also kind of helpful. And knowing that I'm going to get to see most of you at some point in the near future is awesome. It's exciting. I'm going to have a meeting with Justin. Oh, oh, and don't forget, uh, Q&A number 19 is happening live today at... We, we made an event. This is the first time we're actually planning ahead on this, and I don't want to forget. Uh, where is it? Oh, stop. Just stop. Facebook, stop it. <laughs> we go here, and then if it ever loads, we go to events. Here we go. Uh, today at 12.15, noon 15, 15 afternoon, Eastern time, we'll be doing Q&A live. Andrew's not coming up. We're only going to record a couple episodes. We're going to do it over to computer, but it allows us to do some things a little bit differently. There's an up and a downside to however we do it. So hopefully some of you have the kind of work schedule you can join us. I'd love to see you there. All right. Mm. I like this. Oh, and Mark had it. Right there, I appreciate it. And Jenny, I see what you're doing with that hashtag, and I, I know, I appreciate it. Thank you. Gad says, whistle kick the movie. There's a zombie apocalypse and martial artists around the globe find each other for one last stand to save humanity. That's great. I would, I would absolutely. <laughs> Jenny says, Gad, from an attacking horde of zombies. Oh, I love the ridiculousness of guys. Remember, if you want to support us, we've got the code FIRSTCUP15. We've got the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And if you want the whole list, check out the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. I think that's getting updated today. We shall see. First Cup's the only martial arts morning show live, 6.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. I am thankful for each and every one of you. I appreciate you coming by, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Peace. Have a great day, Lou. And all you crazy cats.